The PC in Pokemon games is an essential mechanic. You move your Pokemon around with draw, deposit, and it's how you can craft a perfect team. But what if we took it away? Would the game still be possible without the PC? Better yet, can you beat a hardcore Nuzlocke without the PC? Let's find out. In this video, we're going to be doing a Pokemon Fire Red Nuzlocke without the PC. Before we start, let's lay the ground rules. For the Nuzlocke, if a Pokemon faints, that Pokemon is dead and I can't use it anymore. I can only catch the first Pokemon I encounter in a route. I have to nickname all my Pokemon. I can't overlevel paths to Gym Leader's Ace and no items in battle. As for how the no PC additional rules are going to work, in this run, I'm not allowed to use the PC. That means no withdrawing, depositing, or moving Pokemon from in or out the box. If a Pokemon faints, I won't be able to release it. So that means they will stay in the party and I just won't be able to use it. This means that whatever Pokemon I catch are going to be sticking with me permanently. And if I lose a Pokemon, it's going to be taking up a space in my party. Well, technically. Really depends. You'll see what I mean later. Anyways, we start off our journey as I name my rival PC and I pick Bulbasaur. I name him Fresh and I pick him because out of all the starters, he can most easily take on the early game. There aren't that many crazy encounters early game and I want to save the spots on my party for other later Pokemon. I already had a plan to buy the Magikarp in Route 4 at the Poke Center and get an Eevee in Celadon City. Gyarados and Eevee will be very good Pokemon through the Nuzlocke so I'm saving two spots for them. My first encounter is a Pidgey that I ignore. I'm gonna do that a lot. I'm going to be ignoring a lot of encounters. Pidgeot isn't really good, and I would prefer to catch a Zubat that evolved into Golbat. I wish you could get a Crobat in this game, but you can't, which is so dumb you need the national decks. I imagine a Pokemon refusing to evolve because you didn't update your iPad, it's so dumb. Golbat has similar stats to Pidgeot, it just has a better and more defensive typing, which I will use. Although I do catch a Rattata who I name Baggy. Baggy is going to be taking care of the flying and bug types that I will inevitably come across in the routes. But after that, I level up and take on Brock. Brock was being really cocky. He was saying I would lose, I would, like, he would not shut up about how good he was about rock types. You're going to challenge me even though you know you'll lose. Oh wow, look at that, now you look stupid. Anyways, I did get my Magikarp, who I named Underrated, and evolved him into Gyarados. So now I have an answer to my rival's Charmeleon. I take on Misty, and this is another straightforward battle. I beat her first Pokemon with Razor Leaf, and when Starmie came out, I switched to Gyarados and used Bite. So, I won. And after we beat Misty, we also gain access to something that might be crucial to the run. The Daycare. Now, the daycare in Fire Red can take one Pokemon and take care of it. Why is this good for me? Because if I ever need to, I can essentially free up one space in my party if it's full by putting one of my Pokemon in the daycare. It's a way to free up space without using the PC. It's only one Pokemon though, so it still isn't making the challenge trivial. I head to the next city and then I catch a Diglett in Diglett Cave who I name Burl. Diglett will help with the electric gym as well as just being very fast. The big issue with him is that he's pretty frail. If he gets hit by a leaf in the wind, he will explode. But other than that, he's pretty great. I go on to take on Surge and yeah, it wasn't even close. It was just me spamming ground type moves and then Surge Pokemon just kinda died. So yeah, I'm sorry Surge, that, that was, you suck. You really suck at this game. So far, this challenge has been pretty easy. I planned beforehand, yeah, but all the gyms so far have been pressed the right super effective move to win, so... The challenge does pick up later though. But if you're liking the video so far, why not leave a like and comment as well as subscribe. It would help me out a lot. Anyways, I head to Rock Tunnel and catch a Zubat. So finally, I have an answer for Erica. I named Zubat Bowl and evolved him into Golbat, then headed to Celadon City. I get my Eevee, who I name Hoppy, then evolve it into Jolteon. Jolteon takes care of Gyarados and the other flying types from our rival, so that's why I chose Jolteon over the other evolutions. Now, looking at my full team, it's pretty good. I think I have a lot of answers to a lot of things that we will come across in the playthrough. 
so hopefully we can keep it intact. Now it's time to take on Erica. This battle is kind of the same thing as all the others. I spam wing attack and even though a bowl is paralyzed, it's still safe to stay in because bowl resists all of Erica's moves. This kind of marks a problem with gyms having mono type teams because unless they have some sort of unique strategy or a counter, they don't mark a challenge if you have a super effective move. I'm hoping someday in the future Pokemon will get rid of type based gyms and maybe do something different like, I don't know. Attack based gym, defense based gym, something like that. Anyways, I break into the Team Rocket base and fight Giovanni, who is kind of a joke in this game. This man unironically uses Onyx and calls himself a boss. It's so embarrassing. Fresh takes out his first two Pokemon, but Kangaskhan did pose a bit of a threat. After I saw that I didn't do much damage to it, I used Sleep Powder and then switched into Bowl. But Bowl didn't take a hit too well after Kangaskhan had a one turn sleep and used Mega Punch, so I switched into Underrated. And when I saw that Giovanni couldn't do much, I stayed in. I used Dragon Rage, but I ran out of PP to use the second one because I just killed so many Team Rocket Grunts that I just ran out. Kangaskhan uses Mega Punch, which if it crit, would have probably killed, but two water pulses is enough to take out the mob boss and win me the battle. So now we can move on to the next two gyms. I wanted to take on Koga instead of Sabrina first. It's not for any particular reason, it's just that in order to get to Sabrina, you had to do a bunch of Team Rocket stuff first, and I really just couldn't stand Team Rocket anymore. I really just wanted a break from them. I, I just don't... I, 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 I was... I was getting numb from seeing them too much, so like, I just wanted a break. But I can also get the HM for Surf, which is pretty nice. Gyarados special attack isn't as good as his normal attack, but having a strong water move never hurts. Fresh also evolves into Venusaur, which is also nice. But now onto Koga. Now this battle is a little more interesting, as the only move I can hit Koga with that is super effective is a ground type move, and most of his Pokemon have Levitate. So, yeah. Koga is coughing and I lead Burrow. A very smart move for me because I forgot coughing had levitate during this time, the very thing I was just talking about. So I switched into Baggy who I poisoned before the fight for a Guts Boost. Unfortunately he takes a lot of damage on the Swish and misses a Hyper Fang. Like, come on now Baggy, you're making me look bad now. He misses another Hyper Fang and a Sludge plus poison damage puts him at 2 HP. Well that sucks. That was a very embarrassing performance Baggy. I send out Hoppy, who gets crit sludged on the switch. Well, isn't that fun? I switch into Underrated, who one shots coughing with a surf. Why didn't I do that from the start? Because Koga is an annoying, cheeky bastard who likes to set up smoke screen and poison stall. And if I get unlucky, Underrated could die if luck doesn't stack up against me. I send out Burrow, and eventually I connect a Magnitude that one shots Muck with a crit. Nice. I switch into Bowl when coughing is out and get smacked with a smoke screen. Nothing much happens, it's just me spamming wing attack and Koga spamming hyper potions, but eventually coughing comes down. Weezing is now out and I fire off a wing attack just to see how much it would do and it does nothing, so that's great. I switch into Underrated who gets poisoned under Switch, but I stay in because he is my hardest hitter right now. I use Surf and get hit with a Sludge, so now Underrated is low. My team is getting beat up right now, but I send out Burrow and use Slash to finish Koga off. Yeah, now yeah, I got through that death list, but my Pokemon are low on health and poisoned. So every step I take is going to hurt them, and then they are going to eventually faint. And not only that, I used up all my healing items before, and I can only heal either Underrated or Baggy with my last full restore. I chose to save Underrated, and after a few steps, Baggy dies to poison, giving me my first death of the run, which could have been completely avoided if I bought more healing items. But I wanted to save money to buy TMs in Celadon City, and it's a hardcore Nuzlocke. I wasn't allowed to heal in battle anyway, so I didn't focus on healing items that much. And maybe I could have healed Baggy and Underrated could have survived the trip to the Pokemon Center, but it is what it is. I leave Baggy in the daycare, leaving one space in my party open, and thankfully I can cash a replacement. I cash a Snorlax on Route 16, who I named Fatty. And now it's time to do the next Team Rocket thing to unlock Sabrina. But I was fighting this rocket trainer and I was playing pretty stupidly. I lost Burrow to a level 25 Magnemite. I have no excuse. My brain was just off. I was fighting Team Rocket Grunts for like 20 years. At some point my mental state just went numb from fighting them. But losing Burrow is gonna suck. This essentially means that for the rest of the game, we can only fight with 5 Pokemon. As Burrow's dead body takes up a space in the party. But no time to mourn now. We gotta take on Giovanni. 
I leave Fatty and he leaves Nino Reno. I use two body slams taking out Nino Reno. Nido Queen is out and I use body slam which paralyzes Nido Queen. Now when Fatty was at this health, I don't know why but I didn't switch out or use rest. Maybe I was hoping Nido Queen would get fully paralyzed or something but I was punished for my dumb mistake as Nido Queen uses double kick and ends Fatty's life. So make that four Pokemon we can only use for the rest of the game. That sucks as I hardly got to use Snorlax and he is really good. Underrated comes out and takes out Neoqueen as well as Giovanni's next Pokemon. But I do eventually win, but that whole rocket thing was sloppy play for me. But the run is in dead now and we have to move on. I take on Sabrina. I lead Underrated and she leads Kadabra. I use Bite as Sabrina sets up with Calm Mind. Another Bite takes Kadabra out as Mr. Mind comes out. I use Bite which does less than I hope as Mr. Mind sets up another Calm Mind. But the next bite flinches Mr. Mime and another one puts him low. Sabrina, heal Sabrina heals and eventually after a bunch of bites I switch to Hoppy. Two shockwaves take out Mr. Mime. Venomoth is out and I switch into Bull. And two wing attacks is all it takes to take out Venomoth. Alakazam is out and if this thing sets up calm minds it might be a wipe. But Bull decided to be a beast and not even give Alakazam the chance. He used bite a bunch of times and flinched and destroyed him. Beating Sabrina and earning me my 6th gym badge. Next up we have to head to the fire gym, but not after we do this ice cave thing and, and Jesus I was here for so long, I hated this place. But now we're face to face with Blaine and this gym battle is going to be tough. <laughs> no it's not. Underrated learn rain dance, so yeah after setting it up, all Blaine's Pokemon die to surf, winning me my 7th gym badge. We head back to Viridian City and take on Giovanni, again. But again, it's just another rain dance sweep. And after I beat Giovanni, he suddenly decides he doesn't want to run a criminal enterprise anymore and retire just because he got beaten up by a 10 year old spamming surf. Yeah, next time I'm face to face with a mob boss, I'll start pulling out the rain dance strat that will make him step down. Now it's time to become champion. I head to Victory Road and I made sure to get the TM for Thunderbolt and Ice Beam to teach them to my Pokemon. And considering we only have four Pokemon in order to fight the Elite Four and Champion, I needed all the help I could get. If it comes down to it, I will sacrifice the Bowl of the Golbat if I have to. I need Jolteon and Gyarados to beat my rival PC. And if it comes to it, I will kill Fresh if we really have to, but it'd be better to keep him alive if we can. I specifically made this team when I was planning it to beat my rival's team and have an easy time with most of the gyms and the Elite Four. Assuming everyone was alive, which was my mistake. Now unfortunately I overleveled Dolly by one level because I misread the level cap, but I'm not restarting the run because of that. I just want to be honest since maybe that matters to some people, and I really don't think it's that big of a deal since I'm still only going in fighting with four Pokemon in total, one of them being a Golbat. Fatty and Burrow are still in the party, but they are underleveled and I am not allowed to use them, just as a reminder. But now I'm ready to take on Lorelei. I send out Hoppy and she leaves Dugong. Thunderbolt this, Thunderbolt that, but her Lapras survives and hits a Confuse Ray. Lorelei heals, but Hoppy fights through the confusion and hits a critical hit Thunderbolt. Jinx is out and I switch to Bull because I want to shake off the confusion and be safe. But Jinx hits a lovely kiss, putting Bull to sleep. I decide to stay in as Bull can probably take Jinx on, but Jinx now uses a track and makes Bull a simp, so now I gotta switch into Hoppy. From there, two Thunderbolts take Jinx out. First Elite Four down. Next is Bruno, which is the easiest Elite Four, honestly. Fresh takes Onyx out, then I put Hitmonchan to sleep, and then I start setting up Growth. I didn't do this against the Onyx, because the Onyx has War to prevent setup. If you're wondering why I don't just use Gobat, who is super effective, it's just because Gobat is trash. I think this is safer, as Fresh is pretty bulky and a crit won't kill. After setting up, Razor Leaf destroys Bruno's whole team. That is Bruno down. Next up is Agatha, who is the one I was most scared about. I miss a Sleep Powder as Gengar sets up a double team. Fortunately, the second Sleep Powder hits and I switch into Bowl. Bowl hits a critical hit bite which doesn't kill Gengar even though he's 10 levels above. Are you, are you serious? Are you, are you? Okay, whatever. I want to keep underrated in the back just in case I need to use Intimidate. So this was the best plan I could come up with. Agatha uses a full restore waking Gengar up and healing him while Bowl misses a bite. But thankfully the next bite flinches and two more take out Gengar. Haunter is out and Bowl hits a bite while Haunter puts him to sleep. 
I assume Bull can take a hit cause he's literally 10 levels higher than the Haunter, but after seeing that he can't, I switch into Hobby for free. A Thunderbolt takes Haunter out. Thunderbolt also takes out the Golbat that comes out, and I'm not confident Hoppy can take out Arbok one on one, so I hit a Thunder Wave and then switch to Underrated. I set up Randance and use Surf twice, taking out Arbok. Agatha's second Gengar is out, and I switch to Fresh, who takes a Sludge Bomb, and then I hit a Sleep Powder, while Gengar misses Hypnosis. That might have saved me the run, honest, because now Underrated can come in and safely beat away at Gengar even after getting poisoned. That's the third Elite down. Now for Lance. Lance leaves Gyarados, and I also lead underrated the Gyarados, which was a mistake, but whatever, man. I switch into Hoppy, who takes the Dragon Rage, and then takes out Gyarados with a Thunderbolt. Dragonair is out as I switch into underrated. He uses two Ice Beams, taking Dragonair out as Aerodactyl comes out. Aerodactyl has Ancient Power, which, if it crits, is going to kill Gyarados and end me and the run right here. But if I switch into any of my other mons, a crit will also kill them. So I click Ice Beam as Aerodactyl hits Ancient Power, and... It doesn't crit. But Ice Beam doesn't even kill it, so I switch into Hoppy, who survives an Ancient Power, and outspeeds Aerodactyl to hit a Thunderbolt. Dragonair is out, and I switch into Fresh, who takes a Thunder Wave. I have no clear plan here, I just needed to make sure I maximize my chances of Gyarados and Jolteon surviving this fight. So I decided to just stall Dragonair and use Growth for a while while it uses Outrage and gets confused. And eventually, a Razor Leaf puts it on low, and then Lance switches into Dragonite. I can't risk switching into Underrated at his health, so I need a free switch. So I send out Bowl, and Bowl takes a Hyper Beam and dies. Goodbye, Bowl. You fell off, but you served this team excellently. I send out Underrated, who takes out Dragonite with an Ice Beam, and Dragonite also goes down to two Ice Beams. That's the fourth Elite Four down. And now we are down to three Pokemon. Will that be enough to beat my rival PC? Well, let's see. All of the other rival battles were easy, so I didn't show them, but I have to show this fight. I lead Hoppy, and PC leads Pidgeot. Pidgeot goes down to a Thunderbolt, and now Rhydon is out. I switch to Underrated as Rhydon uses Earthquake, which Underrated is immune to. I set up Rain Dance just in case, and I use Surf to take out Rhydon. Alakazam is out, and I use two Surf to take it out, but not before Alakazam does huge damage to Gyarados. Exegigor, the freaking dancing banana tree, is out now, and Underrated dies to a crit here, so I switch to Fresh and use Sleep Powder to be safe. But when I switch back to Underrated, the Pine Tree wakes up and then Sleep Powder's back. Wow, okay, Gyarados is asleep. This is bad. Ice Beam was my only way of hitting this stupid tree, so... Wow. Okay, I switch back to Fresh to hit another Sleep Powder as Gary uses Light Screen. A bunch of taking hits and growth as well as healing happens until finally, a crit Razor Leaf takes out this stupid dancing tree. Charizard is out, and Jolteon can take him on, but not only is Charizard protected by one more turn of Light Screen, a crit Fire Blast will destroy Jolteon, so I sacrifice Fresh to safely switch into Hoppy. Hoppy uses Thunderbolt, which doesn't kill, as Charizard uses Fire Blast. And we dodge the crit. Hoppy bites back with a Thunderbolt and destroys Gyarados with a final Thunderbolt, winning us the battle and the run. That last stretch of the game was stressful, but this challenge was really fun. Most of it came to planning and searching up movesets, but it was still really cool. Not everything went to plan, but it went well enough. And you know what? That's all I can ask. So the answer to can you beat a hardcore Nuzlocke without the PC in Pokemon Fire Red is a resounding yes. I have more videos in the works, so check those out if you can, and subscribe if you want to get updated on that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and you have a great day. I'll see you all next time.